Okay, I'm going to show you how to plot the profile of hydraulic head in a confined aquifer. This is the formula that we'll use and we'll plot it in Excel. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to make a list of points that we'll plot along the x-axis. The x-axis will go from 0 to 1000 meters and 20 points along that axis will give us a fairly nice looking plot. So I'm going to make 20 points that start at 0 and then uh, go in increments of 50. So the way I do it is to say equals the cell number 2 is equals uh, and the cell above it plus 50. And then I'm going to copy that formula down. And the cell reference is incremented when you do this, so you get a list uh, that's incremented uh, from 0 to 1000. Now, when I type this formula in, I can just go and type this whole thing in right in this block equals, and I can start typing, and it's going to be out to here. And maybe I get it right, but chances are pretty good that, there, that a mistake will be made. So instead, what I'm going to do is show you a, a couple of things that can be done to make the chances of getting the right answer the first time better. So one thing that we'll do is define some variables. So we'll use variable names uh, that correspond to these variables here in the equation. So I'll have a variable called r underscore var. And I'll make a similar variable for each one of these variables. Oops. L K B H one H two. The reason I'm using the underscore VAR is because if I tried to use H1 and H2, these variable names, Excel would think that I was using the cell reference. That cell right there is H1 and that's H2. So to avoid that confusion, I use the underscore VAR to give a, a name for the variable that Excel will not confuse with something else. So to make these into variable names, I'm going to highlight the list of variables as well as the cells to the right. And then I'm going to click on formulas up here and go to the name manager and use create from selection. Left click and this says create names from values in the left column. So the left column is the names and I'm going to hit OK. And the way it works is the left column is the names, the right column is the value. So the recharge, let's do length, that's 1,000. And we'll put here meters. K is 1 e to the minus 6 meters per second. B is 20 meters. And I'm just putting the number in here. The the units go in the column to the right. H1, let's say, is 0. H2 is 20 meters. 0 meter, 20 meters. Now, the recharge, I usually think of recharge in terms of uh, the length per year. And 0 0.2 meters per year is a reasonable value for the recharge around here. These other terms, by the way, are also reasonable values for uh, around here. So in order to use this value though, we have to convert it because all of the units here have to have, or all of the parameters have to have the same um, units. So if we have meters per second for hydraulic conductivity, we have to have seconds, meters per second in the recharge. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say equals this cell reference and to convert meters per year to meters per second, I'm going to say, I'm going to divide by uh, 365 days per year and 86400 seconds per day. 
So I've already worked this out. I know this is right. Whenever you do this, I would recommend that you write it down and make sure that you're converting the units correctly. So now what I'm going to do is go over here and say equals that cell reference and that's the correct value. Now the way this is going to work is um, I've defined these as variables so I can use the variable name by typing it equals r underscore var. If I write that then Excel replaces it with the number that I have here. Uh, I could type in um, equals h2 underscore var and it's 20 and then if I change it here to 30 then it is automatically updated over here so that's also convenient you'll you can change everywhere this variable appears so just to keep track of what these variables are I can go up here to the name manager and if I left click on that I see all these names these variable names that I just created okay so now what I'm going to do is solve this equation at, at each one of these points and the way I'm going to do it is to break this equation up and I'm going to first solve this little block here then the parentheses then the rest of it and each one of those I'll solve in a column and then I'll add up the columns uh, or multiply them and add them in an appropriate way to, to have this equation so it's going to take me several columns and this will make it a little bit bulky, uh, but it will be a lot easier to tell that I've done the correct thing. So this is R underscore bear times L underscore squared. And I'm going to just put this in parentheses and it's divided by 2 times. copy this down I can just copy it by right clicking on the lower right hand corner so that's this block here then in parentheses it'll be um, I'll, let's do um, parent, uh, equals a parentheses and then this is the x value divided by L V A R and subtract parentheses x ah, that's a typo it should be that okay all right that has to be L, name means that it doesn't recognize the variable name that's because I didn't type it correctly and now we have it okay and I'll copy that down all right so let me also point something out when we did this in class I think what I did was to write this in reverse order I write it as minus x over l squared plus x over l if I were to reverse these and write this first uh, I tried this earlier and Excel did not correctly interpret that minus sign if I wrote it like this so in that case Excel did not correctly interpret this leading minus sign it just it ignored it so I'm not quite sure what the problem is with that but it wasn't working and so I would recommend that you don't use that leading minus sign just write it this way it's probably easier to understand anyway okay so that's the term in parentheses and now I'll type the next term and I'll, we'll do all of this so it's uh, h2 subtract those h terms and then actually I need a equal sign in the beginning 
and then times and I use this cell reference and I'm going to divide by and we'll put a parenthesis there just for good measure and then HR H1 VAR and that will all get copied down like so. Okay, so the formula that I want, the final formula, will be column B times column C plus column D. And then I'll copy that down. Okay. So that's the hydraulic heads. And actually what I might do is I'm going to insert a column here. And let me just, for clarity, I'm going to type this X. And I'll type this as H. And I guess I won't put anything here. These are just intermediate values. OK, so now we have to plot this up. So we can go to insert plot and that might be that might be the best way but usually the way I do it is I just highlight all of this stuff and go to insert and we'll call it a scatter plot at first and what this has done is it uses this as the x-axis by default and then all of these are plotted with respect to the x-axis. And so I only want this last one, so I'm just going to erase all these others. This is that column, the constant, that's nothing. This is just this intermediate value. Click on it and delete it. And then that's that stuff. Get rid of it. OK, so this is the plot that we want. Um, we can see the points. I think it's going to look better if we make this uh, solid line. So I'm going to I select this plot and right click and then go to Format Data Series and go to Marker Options. The marker is the point, so I'll turn that off. And I'll go to Line Color, Solid Line, and let's just make it black and line style and so there it is and we have say a three that's a nice thick line so there's the hydraulic head and I think what would be good is if we label these axes so um, actually also what would be good see how this x-axis by default goes to 1200 we don't really care about anything past 1000. So what I did was right click on the axis and go to format axis. And the maximum value really should just be 1000. That's that's what, that's plenty. There it is. And we can then right click and go to select data. And yeah, actually, what I think we'll do to put these axes, uh, axis labels in is just go to um, insert text box and go here to
So we put that up there. And that looks pretty good, I think. Then what we can do is I usually turn off the line around the outside so no border. So this looks pretty good. And what we can do now is to uh, select it, right click, and we can copy it. And now if we go to um, go to go to Word and we let's open let's just do a new document in Word and we can then so what I did before I left Excel was I highlighted this right click right click on the whole thing so I selected the whole thing and I copied it or I pressed copy and then if I go to Word, I can go and right click and paste, and I have several options. Um, some of them uh, are better than others for different applications. What I think probably would be the best here, I would use it as a picture. So this is the clearest. It's, it's easy to embed this into uh, a Word document. The downside is that this is no longer linked to Excel, so if you want to make a change, you have to go back here and make the change. Okay, so that should get you going on the things that you need to do for the assignment.